Hey, guys welcome back to my channel this is a story of what if Naruto trained seriously, after the Sasuke retrieval arc. After Naruto and Sasuke's fight at the Valley of the End, Naruto has an epiphany, and everything he thought about changes. Now during his training trip with Jiraiya, the blonde trains like crazy, returning to the village, two and a half years later, as a new shinobi. One who vows to protect the village even if it costs his life. However, those who knew his usual nature wished he didn't change. Before we start don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel it means a lot to me and check the description for the creator of this great fanfic. Now let's start the story. Chapter 9 Homecoming Konoha was, most of the time, blessed by warm weather which allowed the villagers to always wear light clothes and even allowed a nice time at the lakes. The villagers were having their normal routines, merchants selling their products, friends joining together for food and drinks, girls talking about boys and shopping. Guys discussing about martial arts and well girls. It was as normal as any other place, however that all was ruined by what appeared to be a little kid with a blue scarf around his neck chasing after a black cat, while causing havoc amongst town. This was the second time he was chasing the damn cat and he swore the damn animal would be skinned alive, when he caught it. His team was following from the roof with the intention of catching the cat up front, but Konohamaru reasoned that they didn't want to get their hands dirty, leaving the work all for him. Suddenly, the cat entered in a darkened alley before stopping because of the huge wall that prohibited him from escaping from his pursuer. It, then, snarled in a pathetic attempt to scare the two approaching genins away, but it was unsuccessful. The little girl with the funny hair pressed the intercom button and communicated that the target was trapped. Hearing this, Konohamaru suddenly jumped from the other side of the wall, before landing graciously on top of the trapped animal, thus capturing his prey, or so he thought. The animal fought with all his might to hurt the Sandime's grandson in the worst way possible, but the little guy wouldn't budge. After a while, Konohamaru managed to lock Tora in with his arm, while smiling at finally being able to capture the damn feline. He was smiling like crazy, However the cat managed to free his claws and lashed them at Kanahamaru's face with enough fury that caused the little guy to scream from pain. At the mission room seeing the cat Tora being squeezed like a toy by its owner, the genin team couldn't help but feel bad for the little animal. They, like every genin in Konoha, knew why it escaped a lot. After the feudal lord's wife left the premises, Ebisu, the team's junin sensei lashed out at their bad skills for taking too long to chase the cat, meaning more training for them. Moegi, though, protested. But sensei, that cat was difficult to trace, he seems pretty used to escaping, I won't hear it, this only proves that you three lack the skills to perform this mission properly, Ebisu scowled. Konohamaru, though, took an indignant sit on the ground, before protesting that he couldn't show his real skills in these lame missions, which made Yumino Uruka, who was sitting next to the Hokage, explaining that about ninja ranks and mission ranks, which was later seconded by the Hokage, who voiced that only D-ranked mission for now. Obviously, though, Konohamaru protested, I can't keep doing these lame missions, after all, I will become the Nanadime, seventh, Hokage, huh? And who will be the Rokudime Hokage if I may ask? Asked Tsunade, clearly interested in what the little guy had to say. Who else? Naruto Nichin will be Rokudime. Ebisu, Uruka and Tsunade were surprised to hear this, since it's been three years since the blonde left with Jiraiya of the Sanin. At the Hokage's office as Tsunade, Uruka and now Shizun looked at the Genin team leaving the administration building, they couldn't help but imagine the blonde. It's been three years since he left for real training with Jiraiya-sama, I wonder when he will be back. Uruka asked. Tsunade remained silent for a while, wondering about the blonde. Looking at Konohamaru now, she could have swore she saw the same blonde brat annoying the hell out of her, but she remembered that after the traitorous ordeal three years prior, she knew that the blonde was now different than the exuberant demeanor he always carried within him. She just hoped beyond hope that Naruto was able to maintain his innocence a bit longer, or else Tsunade feared that what made the blonde's personality would soon vanish. He's scheduled to be back today, I believe, we need him here, though. I feel that some drastic changes will occur soon, Tsunade said. Westgate leaving the forest path, three shadows approached the village they left behind for so long. Well, at least Naruto and Jiraiya more than Yugo did, but all of them spent quite a lot of time away from the village. Their clothes remained almost the same, with Naruto being the only one who added another piece. 
On top of his dark gray shirt, he was now wearing a customized black vest with the red spiral on his back, just like a Junin-style vest, but entirely black. As they entered the village, nostalgia hit both Naruto and Yugo like wildfire, but whereas you would think Hayate's memories would bombard the woman the second she stepped into the village, instead all she thought was how much she missed her peers at the Anbu and of course, those who graduated with her at the academy. It has been three years, Naruto was looking around the village as both Jiraiya and Yugo looked at him with a smile on their faces. Both of them knew how much Naruto loved Konoha and its sights. The woman, though, lost her smile and looked at Jiraiya. Jiraiya-sama, now that I returned, I must present myself at Anbu headquarters, could you tell Hokage-sama this for me? The perverted only nodded, before he saw that Naruto and Yugo were crossing eyes with each other. I'll see you around Naruto, maybe get together sometime for lunch. I'd like that very much Yugo-chan, you can take me to that sushi place you're talking about, say tonight at 8. The woman smiled once more, before vanishing within a swirl of leaves, but the message was already delivered. Jiraiya could only smile as he saw his precious student's interaction with Yugo. Ever since these two bonded back at the waterfall place, their relationship only improved with time, up to the point of even going out six months ago to a village near the capital of Water Country. The pervert was still due to convincing Naruto to tell him how that night went. What the pervert didn't know and probably was dying from curiosity was that the night that they went out was the first time they hooked up with one another. The blonde would still daydream about how it was to kiss the gorgeous Kunoichi and the fact that Yugo was smiling the entire time, something clicked the time inside Naruto and he couldn't help but smile in response. How many times do I have to ask for you to tell me what happened that night, Naruto? I want to know, please, how many times do I have to say to you Aero sensei that's mine and Yugo Chan's privacy, dear Kami, sometimes I wonder if you're asking this, so that you can use us as characters for your next book. Jiraiya had the decency to snort at the blonde from being caught. His new book, Ika Ika Makeout Tactics was indeed developed by watching Naruto and Yugo interact with one another. Jiraiya was just thankful that Naruto didn't read his book, otherwise the wiseass would figure it out instantly and, well he didn't want to think about getting the blonde angry, not if Yugo happens to join his side after knowing as well. The subject was dropped as they entered the administration building, all keen on talking to Tsunade as soon as possible. At the Hokage's office Tsunade was now alone in her office when a sudden knock was heard. Giving it no mind, she authorized entrance, before the door opened. It took only a glimpse of blonde hair entering her office to realize just who was at the door. She took a moment to seize him up from head to toe and she was surprised at how much bigger he was now. He was easily her height if not more. Also, he changed his clothes drastically, Tsunade reasoned. She happened to like it in fact and couldn't help but wonder what happened to change his mind about getting rid of those hideous orange clothes. She was by his side in a minute, before enveloping the young man in a fierce hug, which much to her surprise, was returned as she felt Naruto's arms around her. I missed you Tsunade Bakken, a uh, sorry about the name calling, I guess some old habits don't change, he he he, missed you too Brad and I do care about the name, so stop calling me that okay. I can tell you've changed a lot, I'm really glad to see you again, Tsunade said with a smile on her face as she looked at the younger blonde. Now that the sentimental reunion was over, Tsunade went back to her desk and returned to the Hokage position, before addressing the two once more. So, I see you managed to improve, after all. Huh, you're expecting us not to bring any results. You insult my teaching skills Su Haim, mumbled Jiraiya, earning a smile from the Hokage, before she heard the door knocking once more. Excuse me Tsunade-sama, but Shizune, was, Naruto, you're back, Sakura shouted as she fastened the steps to face the new blonde before her and just like Tsunade, she was admiring every bit of this new Naruto, not in the same way, though, as Tsunade was more of a motherly manner and Sakura was, well, moving on. Sakura, it's been a while. How are you doing? asked Naruto. Meanwhile, Tsunade and Jiraiya were exchanging some words while looking at the teammates reuniting once more. Jiraiya explained about Yugo going to Anbu headquarters and a little summary of Naruto's training trip, including some aspects of Naruto and Yugao's interaction that shocked Tsunade, but her eyes returned to normal. Surely, Naruto would be able to heal the woman's depression, but she didn't know this relationship would actually be a romantic relationship. 
After a while, talking, Naruto heard from Tsunade that he was to be tested right away. Okay, but how do you want me to show my skills? Naruto asked, before Tsunade pointed to the furthest window of the room. The blonde, then, opened the window and looked outside for a while, before he spotted his opponent reading that smug book, before greeting the blonde. You got taller Naruto, that's for sure, I, trust that your training has honed your skills as you desired. As Kakashi entered the room, he saw also Sakura. You two will be my opponent, Kakashi said. I want to see how you two will fare against someone of Kakashi's skills, Sakura, show me you haven't been slacking in your training. The fight will occur at training ground N. 7 in exactly 4 hours. Both me and Jiraiya will be there as well to supervise, and Naruto, depending on the skills you show, there will be a reward for you. Nobody in the room, except for Jiraiya, knew Naruto to look at Tsunade with suspicion and skepticism. Sakura was only waiting for the blonde to scream to the heavens about whatever the reward is and challenge Kakashi that he would win for sure. But instead, he just looked at the Hokage with his eyes unmoving and a simple smile on his face. Could we perhaps do it now? I kind of have a date with someone and she's kind of hard to find if I were to cancel it. Sakura was shocked instantly, Naruto on a date, but he just arrived, how could that be? Kakashi was also shocked at this information, since he was having the same thoughts as Sakura. However, one thing occurred to him. He heard that one of his old Anbu subordinates Azuki Yugo joined Naruto and Jiraiya on their travels, but the woman was so fixed on avenging Hayate, no it couldn't be possible. Hopefully, Jiraiya solved the entire situation. Don't worry Naruto, I'll find her and explain the situation. I'm sure she'll be delighted to see the display, said Jiraiya, before he vanished within a swirl of leaves, leaving Naruto with a smile as he left the room, with the promise of meeting them on training ground 7. Sakura was gawking like a fish and so was Kakashi, but Tsunade couldn't help but smile at the blonde's actions. Well, since that's already out of the way, why don't you two scram out of my office, because I got work to do. With Naruto after leaving the office, Naruto chose to wander around town for a while, as in getting once again adjusted to the sights. Apart from the inclusion of Tsunade's head at the Hokage Monument, nothing much has changed, he reasoned as he passed through the academy and a couple of restaurants and stores that he remembered three years ago. People would wander around chatting happily with friends, lovers, family. Suddenly, he heard Sakura shouting for him to wait, getting his attention, thus stopping in the middle of the street. Hey Sakura, what's up? The girl took a while to recover from so much running, apparently from chasing Naruto all the way from the administration building. Naruto, I wanted to catch up with you. You leave for three years and then come back, I want to know what happened, how was it? It was great, Jiraiya sensei taught me lots of great stuff. I managed to perfect some flaws about my before skills and even managed to add quite a few extra. Actually, I plan to show them in our match against Kakashi Sensei. What about you, though? I'd be wrong to presume you're a chunin now. Sakura looked at the blonde strangely as he was talking. Naruto was just so much different now that she felt like she didn't know him at all. The strange level of confidence, the calm talking, expressing different words than Ramen and Hokage. Yeah, I managed to pass last year, in Takigakur. Both I and Shino managed to pass, but the others managed at the following exams. Now, out of our academy friends, only you aren't a chunin yet, Naruto. Neji recently got promoted to Junin and it's doing a lot of missions with Gai Sensei and Kakashi Sensei. Sakura thought the blonde would be shouting mad at the news of being the last one, but instead, he just kept that smile of his, as he continued walking, presumably to his apartment. That's nice, Neji is a talented shinobi. I'm sure it was only a matter of time until his talent was noticed by the Hokage. Now, I guess I have to pass the next one and become a chunin just like all you guys. Hopefully, I could, perhaps, surpass Neji and become a junin as well in the future. Now, I wonder what happened to my apartment since I was gone. After I left, I forgot to ask someone to take care of it for me, so I wonder what a mess it must be right now, wanna help me clean? Asked Naruto. The girl nodded, before they went up the stairs and stopped once they reached his floor. When the door was opened, no one was prepared for the sudden wave of dust to fill their lungs, making both Shinobis cough instantly. Cough, cough, wait right here Sakura, I'll get inside and open the window, 
Man I can't see a thing inside, after he entered, Sakura lost sight of him and wondered if she should have checked his apartment every once in a while. It wasn't until the dust cloud started to vanish that the blonde shouted for her to enter. As she got inside, she looked at the window that Naruto mentioned and thanked the heavens for the sudden air entrance that filled the room, cleaning their lungs a bit. Needless to say, the place was a freaking mess. Some clothes tossed on the floor, old ramen cups piled next to the only garbage can which clearly wasn't emptied if the stinking smell was any indication. Okay, I almost feel like hiring a genin team to clean this place, it's a mess in here. Well, let's clean right, cage bunshin no jutsu, instantly, four doppelgangers appeared next to Naruto, and then all five of them started cleaning, each doing a specific task, thus not needing Sakura's help in the end. The original one gathered his old orange jumpsuits in order to burn them all, since he already had a change in wardrobe, one of the clones was responsible for gathering the litter on the ground and throwing in a big garbage disposal located on the building's first floor. Two clones wiped the dust off the wooden floor and some accumulated at the walls. The window needed some cleaning as well, so the fourth clone was in charge of that. In little to no time, Naruto's place was already clean and the real Naruto dispelled the clones while clapping his hands signifying the job done. Sakura, though, just kept watching the clones do all the work and was amazed at the time needed to clean everything and she actually noticed that no spot was left unchecked by the blonde which was surprising considering that Naruto was after all a boy and as such, a boy wouldn't be able to clean at certain spots. Well, now we can be here, without risk of coughing to death. So, how was your training this last three years? Asked Naruto, getting the pink-haired girl's attention. It was great as well, Tsunade-sama and Shizune senpai are very strict and in little to no time, the results were already showing up. I managed to learn some medical ninjutsu under their wing and even got to help them at the hospital, taking care of some patients, although Tsunade-sama is still due to allow me on the more sensitive procedures. I even got some classes in poisons and antidotes from both Shizune Senpei and Anko Senpei. One piece of advice, though, Anko Senpei is stricter than Shizune and Tsunade Sama combined, I mean she literally tossed me on the ground several times, until I learned them. In the end, though, it was for the better as I intend to create antidote for every poison in existence at the elemental nations in the future. How about you? Tsunade Sama told me Jiraiya Sama is a master of ninjutsu and even the art of fuenjutsu, though I don't know much more than the usual ceiling scrolls. Naruto kept hearing everything and smiling through the whole thing. He was wondering about Sakura's sudden change in behavior from that usual short temper of hers, when the blonde acted stupid in front of her. Truth to be told, Naruto was wondering if his teammate acted that way because of the things he would do in order to get attention because now that they were talking like equals, she was much calmer than before, which was strange. Jiraiya sensei was also strict as hell. We did some training with the Rasengan that would send me to unconsciousness almost every day. We sparred almost every day as well and the man helped me in correcting a lot of my flaws regarding taijutsu and weapon throwing. I'll tell you, boosting of confidence aside, I thought I had it all once I graduated and became a genin, but after what happened, it showed me that my skills were nothing compared to what it should have been. Luckily, I managed to see them now, right? Also, we used to travel a lot and Jiraiya took me to see some great sights around the elemental nations. There is this place in water country called Taki no Sampasu, Waterfall of the Three Paths and it's very beautiful. We happened to train there for a long time, so that I could get adjusted to strong water currents, while sparring with him. These last three years were very good, indeed, Sakura. As the conversation continued, Sakura definitely stopped thinking about the differences between this Naruto and the one she came to know. To her, it was like seeing two distinguished personalities, whose comparison was just not possible. So, she settled for knowing this new Naruto and go on from there. It wasn't until Sakura mentioned Sasuke's name that Naruto's usually relaxed expression suddenly changed and the girl noticed instantly. In fact, she was rather uncomfortable in discussing the Uchiha manner with Naruto, because of what the blonde told her three years ago, but the fact remained that Sasuke was a part of Team 7 and Sakura wanted the team to be reunited once more, regardless of her feelings for the raven-haired boy. Naruto for his part, though about lashing out at Sakura for trusting someone who didn't think twice about betraying the so-called Team 7, but between doing this and risk crushing her heart, the blonde choose to be stoic about the subject. 
Sakura, you already know my position in this manner, so it's better for us if we place a mute point in all this. I can see that you're eager to bring him back and although I don't agree with you, I'll respect it, seeing as you are a teammate and a friend. I only hope that he doesn't do to you what he did to me. Sakura didn't need to ask what Sasuke did to Naruto at the time, since it was pretty obvious, by remembering Naruto at the hospital three years ago. However, she was surprised with Naruto's strange and somewhat mature answer to an obvious emotional concern. I can see this trip did well to you Naruto, you're definitely more matured than when you left. We'd better go to the training ground, because it's almost time and I don't think Kakashi Sensei will be late this time. After the blonde offered a nod, they left the premise and went to the training ground. With Yugo right after presenting once more at the Anbu HQ, Yugo was surprised that her captain Tenzo released her from presenting for duty the first day. Getting some spars with Naruto was alright and kept her from rotting her skills, but she missed the constant rush of Anbu level missions. Now, though, she was with nothing to do, until the blonde came by and took her to their date at the sushi place. To this time, she still was a little lost concerning this rather, odd, relationship. It all began with Hayati's message from the beyond saying that she'd have to move on and the hidden message that the blonde would be a valuable partner. The truth was that after a few dates and conversations throughout the trip, Naruto proved himself time and time again that he was more than a 15-year-old genin. His opinions were rather mature for his age, she reasoned and, surprisingly, he managed to keep a certain level of conversation that Yugo is used to have with her peers. A sudden memory appeared full force in her mind about a special day when he invited her to go the water country's capital city as his date and it made her blush madly. They didn't do anything out of the ordinary apart from making out severely. At the time, a sudden desire of flesh appeared in both of them which made Naruto pay the bill sooner than expected, before they rented a hotel room to be together. Just the feel of the blonde's toned body at the time, managed to send shivers to her body. However, what could have been a perfect night, ended up being cut short because both she and Naruto sensed some strange activity happening and opted to flee the site from fear that Akatsuki was behind all this, but the thought was forever kept in her mind. As she wandered around town, her eyes caught sight of her role model, or rather what he used to be when a part of the Anbu Corps. Hitaki Kakashi was, by all means, a legend of the shinobi world, as the copycat ninja Kakashi no Sharingan, although that book he was reading managed to low his reputation around the village. Not that the man cared, though, as several people already told him to stop and he paid it no mind. Greetings senpai, it's been a long time since we last met. Instantly, Kakashi stopped his attention from the book and looked at his former Anbu subordinate, before greeting her with the usual, yo. Yugo-san, indeed it's been a while, how are you doing? The greeting was okay and all, but Yugo could very ascertain when someone was coming with bullshit talk with her, before saying what they really want, so it was fair to say that she preferred that the man would stop doing this and go directly to the point. Kakashi Senpei, I know you too much for you to just greet me and ask how I am doing. You chose to meet me here, because you were aware this is the path out of the headquarters. What is it that you want? Asked Yugo, showing no sights of being amused at Kakashi's stoic personality. Straight to the point as always, I was hoping to see if we could discuss about a certain blonde that from what I hear, has been common knowledge between you and me. Yugo looked at the man in front of her incredulously. Kakashi never bothered about others' personal lives, seeing as his personal life wasn't that remarkable in the first place. When she was with Hayate, the man wouldn't even lift an eyebrow in surprise after the announcement of their engagement. Nevertheless, figuring out what he wanted to talk about Naruto was better than assuming that he knows about the fact that they were dating. Naruto. What about him? I'm already aware of the fact that you traveled with him and Jiraiya-sama for one and a half years and when he came back, he mentioned that he couldn't take too long for an exercise to show the results of his training because he had a date with someone. Now, I know that the blonde is growing up and maybe, attract some attention of the female population, but even then, I don't consider him fast enough to arrange a date just after arriving. Kakashi Senpei, seriously, Yugo didn't know what to say to the man who considered himself responsible for the blonde just because the man was his Junin sensei three long years ago and why would he care anyway? Yugo heard the word, someone, and smiled slightly at the crafty blonde from keeping everyone at a loss on who would the date, but Kakashi linked the dots pretty easily. It didn't matter, though. 
So, you're really quick and assume that because of what he said, I'd be his date, because of the time we spent together. Seriously, Kakashi Senpei, what if Naruto met with a Kunoichi from the village when she was on a mission or something? You have yet to deny your involvement in this manner. You go, asked Kakashi, already sure of the answer, but also because the woman never lost that smile of his, like telling the man it was not of his business who she should date and why. You're right, I'm not denying. Indeed Naruto and I are dating, so what's the problem? Kakashi's intention, at first, was to give the girl some heads up about dating someone younger than her, and Naruto of all people. However, just like Sakura, Kakashi was under the impression that the boy was just as he was before he left, immature and loud. Yugo, for instance, was already aware of Naruto's underestimation by his colleagues in thinking that he was a no-good loudmouth and rash-thinking individual. Oh man, he thinks he knows Naruto. If you're thinking about the blonde's previous behavior, then you of all people should be aware of his intentions at the time, to act like he did. After all, aren't you the creator of the phrase, look underneath the underneath. Kakashi's sudden serious visage told her that maybe Kakashi misinterpreted Naruto's act of ignorance towards his surroundings, so she settled herself to explain better from the man who until now thought he knew about his student's life. Seeking attention was everything he carved for, seeing as people either ignored him or sent hateful glares because of what he carries within him. For instance, Kakashi Senpei, would you consider him the same Naruto you know, after he asked you about his skills as a shinobi three years ago? If he was anything like you portrayed him out to be, despite getting beat constantly, he would continue with the same reckless thought over and over again, thus getting killed in the process. You met the real him, albeit briefly, one day prior to his trip with Jiraiya. Now, seeing him today could you compare him with the one you knew? Kakashi concurred with everything the woman told, although he didn't show it. It was true that Kakashi was misinformed of the blonde's presumably cheerful demeanor, never once displaying a hint of sadness or seriousness in his tone of voice. The man had the decency to sigh in dismay at the sudden revelations. Huh, I guess you're right, although I have yet to see this new Naruto you portray him out to be in the midst of battle and only then, will I know that he changed for good, which in fact will occur at exactly 15 minutes from now at training ground number 7, he invited you to come watch, since it will get in the way of your date. I'll be there in 15 minutes, I just have to change my clothes and put my Anbu uniform. You and only you have knowledge of our relationship, Senpei and for now, I and Naruto agreed that is to remain this way, see ya there. After saying, Yugo vanished within a shunshin, thus leaving Kakashi alone thinking about the blonde enigma and how different could his fighting skills be. At training ground number 7 the sun was about to set as Kakashi, Sakura and Naruto looked at each other, prior to the battle that was about to occur. Near a tree, were Shizune and Tsunade looking at them from afar with Jiraiya sitting on top of a tree branch with a lone Anbu member standing on top of said tree branch. To the untrained eye, Naruto was focusing his sight entirely on Kakashi, but his eyes were more inclined to see both Kakashi and Yugo whose position was exactly passing Kakashi's right shoulder at the moment. As in being nostalgic, Kakashi suddenly pulled two bells from his pocket, before explaining the rules. As you can see, it will be bell test all over again, same objective, same rules. I trust that you now will understand when I say that you have to come at me as if you were after my head and seeing as I have a feeling you two are not to be taken lightly, I will use the sharing in this time. Both paid quick attention at the mission objectives while Kakashi strapped the bells on his waist, before placing one hands on his pocket, while observing his opponents. The fight already started, but no side made a move so far. Suddenly, both Naruto and Sakura threw some projectiles towards their sensei, who in turn, jumped by instinct, before taking two kunai since his Sharingan already envisioned the next move. Another barrage of projectiles was thrown at the silver-haired sensei, who in turn, managed to deflect with his kunai, before he threw them towards Naruto and Sakura. Out of the blue, the man started a quick series of hand seals, before the two kunai transformed to ten projectiles, forcing both Sakura and Naruto to evade the barrage. Sakura evading from the left and Naruto doing some back flips. After evading, Naruto and Sakura charged the descending Kakashi from both flanks, being Sakura the one who aimed the first punch, however Kakashi's Sharingan advised him to evade the punch from so much chakra being focused. 
As the punch passed through, the wave of chakra actually managed to hit the tree and Kakashi wondered what exactly the Hokage taught her. However he didn't have time to wonder as Naruto came by with a reverse kick aiming his left stomach, forcing Kakashi to use his arm to defend, which was surprising considering that the kick wasn't a wasted move. The silver-haired shinobi used brute strength to throw Naruto away from him, before he aimed a strong kick at Sakura, but the girl was already far out of range, before she threw a couple of shurikens at his blind side. Focusing chakra to his legs, Kakashi managed to jump in time, before landing on a tree top as he looked at his students. Their taijutsu was already high chunin material, which caused the man to smirk with a sudden feeling of pride, but then he realized that it wasn't him who taught them, so he chooses to focus at the task at hand. Suddenly, Kakashi vanished from sight, leaving Naruto and Sakura in the middle of the field, looking around to spot the surprise attack that would surely follow. Sakura, for instance, was now applying what he learned under Tsunade. Left. Right. Above. Behind. So, if he's in none of these positions, then. She focused all her chakra in one single tenkutsu and punched the ground with all her might. As a result, the entire ground exploded upon contact, thus shaking the entire ground, which almost made Naruto lose his balance as he questioned what the hell was that Sakura just did. This thought was mirrored by an entirely shocked Kakashi who appeared beneath the now destroyed field. Kakashi Sensei. I found you, the man now knew that Sakura learned the secret behind the Hokage's taijutsu technique and he concluded that being on the receiving end of one punch would mean his end, so better stop kidding around. Meanwhile, Tsunade was appraising her skills and Jiraiya was muttering silent words about a second Tsunade. Back to the fight, Kakashi was now facing his students, before Naruto summoned two cage bunshin all of a sudden. Without even attacking, Naruto screamed the word Henge and two windmill shurikens appeared in both his hands in an instant. He threw the first one at Kakashi who dodged it easily to the right, before the blonde threw the other one, forcing him to jump, but he managed to dodge them all. However, much to his surprise, Naruto was already in front of him, with a roundhouse kick just seconds away of hitting Kakashi's head. While being impressed by the blonde's speed, Kakashi managed to defend the powerful kick with his arms, before a kunai suddenly appeared on his hand with the intent of hurting the blonde. It was stopped however, as Naruto managed to hold Kakashi's wrist as they descended to the ground, where Sakura was waiting to deliver the punch. Meanwhile, Kakashi was wondering if the girl would deliver the punch with Naruto nearby, when he realized the blonde substituted himself with a log nearby, leaving him alone to receive the punch. It was luck that a tree branch appeared, allowing Kakashi to flip and land a safe distance away from them, before he hid behind a tree, while watching the splendid teamwork this two were displaying right now. Suddenly, however, a very familiar sound of chakra being summoned into the palm of Naruto's hand, Kakashi got away just in time before Naruto slammed a much bigger Rasengan at the tree, shredding it instantly. At the stands, both Tsunade and Shizune was gawking like a fish at the fight occurred. Certainly, Naruto and Sakura already knew each other and managed to fight together accordingly, but this was unheard of. Plus the fact that Naruto managed to do a Rasengan without the clone's assistance showed much of his training and skills. After evading the deadly attack, Kakashi looked at his students while panting a bit. Surely, keeping on taijutsu wouldn't be a good option for the man, seeing as these two worked well together. Where one would attack, the other would remain as backup and vice versa, he didn't have a time off with them, so maybe a new approach was preferable. Lesson 1. Taijutsu completed, now is time for lesson 2. Ninjutsu, instantly, Kakashi started doing a huge sequence of hand seals with an impressive speed, before he inhaled air into his lungs. Kaden Gukaku no Jutsu, fire release. Grand Fireball Jutsu, he, then, exhaled the technique straight at the two, before he saw that Sakura was about to flee, but stood her ground as the technique approached. Apparently, Naruto said something and she chose to remain. But Naruto couldn't know about. Sweeten Sujinheki, water release, water barrier jutsu. As the fireball approached, a torrent of water appeared in front of them, protecting Naruto and Sakura from the incoming attack, before Kakashi stopped the attack, giving the much-awaited signal for Naruto for another technique of his own creation. Sweeten Suiryukiba, water release, Water Dragon Fang Jutsu, the same torrent of water used for the barrier technique was suddenly transformed into an enormous water dragon as it charged at Kakashi. The technique frightened the Junin for a while, 
before he saw that the dragon was passing a great distance above him, making him smile at the attempt of his student to control such a strong technique. He was under the impression that Naruto did the Suiryudan no Jutsu, but this technique was different. His Sharingan alerted him of it, as he witnessed the dragon's claw just seconds away from decapitating him, forcing Kakashi to evade to the left. However, the attack managed to hit Kakashi's arm slightly, cutting the man's right sleeve entirely. He focused his Sharingan on Naruto's smile, before he realized that this was his trick the entire time. Up on the stands, Jiraiya and Yugo were talking about this new technique and praising Naruto for its usage, while Tsunade and Shizune were trying to see if this was a genjutsu or something. The Naruto they know wouldn't be able to do Sweden jutsus. Looking at the perverted smirking, she knew the man kept the information until Naruto showed it himself. Back to the fight, Kakashi was now dodging another barrage of attacks by Naruto and Sakura, while feeling his stamina leaving him with each evading movement. It was time to bring out the big guns now, since Naruto showed his. Landing a kick on Sakura's chin, Kakashi backflipped as Naruto managed to grab her falling body from hitting on the ground, before he made some hand seals. Raiden Denko no Ukami, lightning release, lightning wolf jutsu, seeing the incoming attack, Naruto grabbed Sakura with his arms before jumping away in time to avoid the fast approaching wolf, however his feet weren't as fortunate which sent thousands of bolts to Naruto's system instantly, earning some screams in agony from the blonde, but other than that, he was fine. Lucky he was that he had a major wind affinity the likes of which no one knew. Sakura, when I say so, you'll move and collect the bells from him, okay. The woman obeyed instantly. Naruto was different, hell she didn't even know half the techniques Naruto and Kakashi used and his moves so far spoke highly of his skills. He, then, got up and Kakashi immediately narrowed his Sharingan eye at Naruto's next move. Suddenly, a vast series of hand seals were being made and Kakashi waited for the eye to tell what would come to him, however the strange thing was that Kakashi just couldn't read Naruto's thoughts. By applying a closer look, Kakashi saw with shock that Naruto wasn't looking at him, but rather his feet, not allowing the Sharingan to know what would come. Futen Daitapa, Wind Release, Great Breakthrough Jutsu, the man was caught by surprise when his eyes saw a sudden ferocious gust of wind towards him, but it was too late to focus chakra on the ground, as Kakashi was sent flying uncontrollably towards the incoming set of trees. It was worse to Kakashi, because he had a lighting affinity, so wind attacks were his major weakness. A sudden bell noise alerted him, but when he sought to look at the bell strapped on his waist, he saw with shock that it wasn't there anymore. Closing his eyes as in waiting for the impact, he was surprised upon seeing that Jiraiya was there waiting for him with a rather big toad who caught him and placed him gently on the ground. When looking up, he saw Jiraiya with a smirk. I forgot to tell you not to underestimate Naruto, Kakashi. In the end, he gave you quite a fight, didn't he? Kakashi was slowly getting up as he saw Naruto and Sakura each carrying a bell while talking to one another. Indeed, Yugao's words made more sense now. The blonde in front of him wasn't the same one he knew, or at least he thought he knew. Afterwards, Tsunade arrived in the middle of the clearing just as Kakashi arrived at the scene. So Kakashi, how is your opinion about their skills as a team? Asked Tsunade, though her answer was already certain. Kakashi closed his Sharingan and looked at his team with a smile on his face. Both Naruto and Sakura have what it takes to be form a team and both have chunin level skills with Naruto being junin in terms of ninjutsu. I'm sure they'll fit your criteria perfectly. Tsunade and Shizune smiled, before she turned to Naruto and Sakura. So, from now on, you two and Kakashi will form team Kakashi and will be grouped on missions in Naruto, said the Hokage, calling the blonde's attention. As of right now, you're awarded with the position of chunin of Kanahagakur. Now pay attention, because generally, in order for a genin to be promoted, he or she must attend the exams, but are occasions when the Hokage, together with the responsible Junin, can promote the genin once he show enough skills to give him the Chunin position and since Kakashi consider you as such, it's my privilege to grant you the position. The blonde was indeed shocked, but he had a feeling the woman wasn't quite done yet. Now, a chunin is a position of privilege within our ranks and as such, it will be required of you to protect Konoha on the front lines. Also, a chunin is to act as captain, so you'll also be drafted to lead a genin mission outside the village from time to time. 
I can see that your skills skyrocketed under Jiraiya's guidance and I believe you earned this position. Now, I would give you the Chunin flak jacket but I see that you already have one, so you can keep it, no problem, any questions? Nope, no questions whatsoever, just the shocked face was evident in his face. And so the Shippuden series begin, I decided to promote Naruto to Chunin by an act of the Hokage, simply because of some reservations of my own regarding the actual Shippuden series. Naruto is now one tough SOB, but because of what's now happening in the manga, I'm not even sure there will be another Chunin exams, so it's less likely that he'll leave the Genin position and advance in rank with his peers. Tell me what you think, later. Thanks for listening I hope you guys liked it don't forget to subscribe and leave a like for more what ifs and support the author, see you guys in the next video.